Welcome everyone to the men's event. I am Christine Chavez. I'm the Diabetes Prevention Coordinator here. We're going to have a lot of great information for you today and I will be sharing with you information on prostate cancer. Please enjoy this event. Prostate cancer and prevention. What is prostate cancer? Prostate cancer is cancer that occurs in the prostate. The prostate is a small walnut shaped gland in males that produce the seminal fluid. It is one of the most common types of cancer in men. Many prostate cancer grow slowly and confine to the prostate gland with no serious harm. While some types can grow slowly and need minimal or no treatment and other types can be aggressive and can spread quickly. Symptoms. You may see no signs or symptoms in its early stages. More advanced stages, signs and symptoms are trouble urinating, decreased force in the stream of urine, blood in the urine, blood in the semen, bone pain, losing weight without trying, and erectile dysfunction. Causes. Prostate cancer begins when cells in the prostate develop changes in their DNA. The cell's DNA contains instructions to tell a cell what to do. Then the changes tell the cells to grow and divide more rapidly than normal cells do, so the abnormal cells continue living while the other cells die. The abnormal cells form a tumor that can grow to invade nearby tissue. After time, subabnormal cells can break away and spread to other parts of the body. Risk factors, age, the risk increases as you age, most common after 50. Race is also a factor, family history, obesity, and prevention. You can choose a healthy diet full of fruits and vegetables. Choose healthy foods over supplements. Exercise most days of the week, at least 30 days, 30 minutes a day. Maintain a healthy weight and talk to your doctor about increased risk of prostate cancer. Men and Heart Disease, presented to you by the Tucson Indian Center Wellness Department. Heart disease is the leading cause of death for men in the United States. Heart disease refers to several types of heart conditions. The most common is coronary artery disease, which can cause heart attacks. This can be caused from a plaque buildup in the arteries. Over time, the arteries narrow and reduce the blood flow to the heart. Other types include conditions with the heart valves that cause the blood to not pump well and eventually cause heart failure. What are the signs and symptoms of heart disease? Sometimes heart disease can be silent. There may be no diagnosis until men experience the signs and symptoms of a heart attack, heart failure, or an abnormal rhythm called arrhythmia. Heart attacks symptoms can feel like chest pain or discomfort in the chest, heartburn, nausea, upper back or neck pain, vomiting, extreme fatigue, dizziness, and shortness of breath. Arrhythmia is palpitations or fluttering in the chest. Heart failure symptoms include shortness of breath, fatigue, swelling of the feet, ankles, legs, abdomen, and neck veins. How is heart disease diagnosed? There are several tests your doctor can perform to diagnose heart disease. These include first, getting a family history and conducting blood work. Your doctor may also recommend performing diagnostic tests like coronary angiogram, electrocardiogram, also known as EKG or ECG, exercise stress tests, or an x-ray. What are the risks of heart disease? Hypertension is a very common and major risk for heart disease. Being diagnosed with diabetes, being obese or overweight, eating unhealthy foods, being stagnant or inactive, excessive use of alcohol, excessive smoking. Reducing your risk of heart disease. Knowing your blood pressure number is very important. A normal blood pressure range is about 120 over 80. Get tested for being diabetic. Stop smoking and limit alcohol use. Get your cholesterol and triglyceride levels checked. Make more healthy food eating decisions. Learn to cope with stress better. Lifestyle changes. 
Lifestyle changes can reduce your risk of complications. The sooner you start, the better you will begin to feel. Your doctor can also prescribe medications to treat heart disease. If you suspect you or someone you know is having a heart attack, call 911 immediately. Good afternoon and thank you guys for being a part of uh, this year's uh, Men's Wellness Day. Uh, my name is Drew Harris. I am the Community Cultural Specialist here at the Tucson Indian Center. And today what I am going to be sharing with you guys is a uh, presentation on stroke education and prevention. Uh, so I hope you guys uh, take away something from this and um, uh, like I'll be sharing, I'll, I'll be sending you guys something in your care packages that uh, goes along with this presentation. Um, so to begin, um, you know, the question you might have is what is exactly is a stroke? Um, well, just as a heart attack, um, like some of you guys might know, it is what happens when blood just can't get to your heart. Um, so in a way, a stroke is a result of an interruption of blood flow uh, to the brain. And so, you know, among Americans, stroke is actually the third leading cause of death and as a major cause and is also a major cause of disability. And um, also, according to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services uh, Office of Minority Health, American Indians slash Alaska Natives, um, and non-Hispanic whites are actually at similar rates of stroke and stroke-related deaths, which is uh, quite surprising considering that, you know, uh, American Indians are, uh, have a higher prevalence rate of obesity and diabetes, which actually are uh, leading causes to, to stroke. Um, so what causes and uh, different types of strokes are there? Um, so like I mentioned, uh, stroke does occur when blood supply to the brain is interrupted or reduced. Um, so this basically deprives oxygen and nutrients um, that uh, get supplied to the brain, uh, causing the brain cells to die. Um, so uh, some people may experience only a temporary disruption um, of blood flow to the brain. Um, and um, and like I said, there's there's two primary uh, types of stroke. One being the ice, uh, ischemic um, stroke, which is an obstruction to the blood flow, uh, which is usually a blockage, um, like in this image to the left here, of the blood vessel. So you know, blood can't get in, so therefore the clog happens, and um, brain cells usually die at that point. Um, or there's the hermogenic stroke, which is uh, usually a rupture in the blood vessel. So this is usually when um, blood um, leaks into the brain, um, like in this picture here to the right. Um, so some facts. So one in six people uh, will experience a stroke in their lifetime and around 15 million people worldwide have a stroke each year um, and blood pressure is actually one major leading cause of stroke however up to 80 percent of all strokes can actually be prevented by keeping a healthy uh, having a healthy lifestyle so we'll talk a little bit about that more and uh, the gift that i will be supplying you guys um, will hopefully encourage you guys to, to live those ha healthier lifestyles. Um, so moving on, uh, a stroke is also a leading cause of death for people above the age of 60. Um, so, you know, the upper age we get um, tends to be, you know, our whatever lifestyle we, we tend to live, that usually catches up to us and um, that's when the problems happen. So um, I'll share a little bit about the causes, I think in the next slide here. Um, so, but there are also 26 million people that actually are stroke survivors that li live among us. So I, I think that's a good takeaway um, that, you know, even though you might have a stroke that uh, you still have a strong chance of living and, and uh, improving your lifestyle. 
Um, so prevent some prevention uh, measures that you might be able to take. So um, many stroke prevention strategies are the same as strategies to prevent heart disease. So you'll hear, I'm sure you guys, uh, if you ever go to the doctor, will hear, hear them say these three things all the time. You know, that's eating a healthy diet, monitoring, monitoring your blood pressure and blood sugar levels, and rec uh, exercising regularly. So, you know, following that healthy diet, making sure you got a lot of vegetables, eggs, um, healthy fats, um, stuff like that, uh, decreasing your amount of cholesterol and saturated fats in your diet. Um, again, you just don't want to clog up your arteries, clog up those blood vessels um, with eating unhealthy. Um, and also monitoring, monitoring your blood pressure levels. Um, so, you know, as blood pressure exerts uh, continuous pressure on the walls of the arteries, it may lead to an arter arterial block. So, um, again, you know, just making sure you're aware of like um, the blood pressure uh, categories and even numbers, right? Knowing like what's, um, what's high, what's low, um, what's, uh, what is systolic versus dystolic? Um, what do those things mean? How can I lower them? Stuff like that. Just making sure you're aware. Um, and also your blood sugar levels. I don't have a, an example up there, but, um, you know, diabetes, again, high blood um, or high sugar in the blood can contribute to stroke. So we want to watch that, you know, limiting your sugar, your uh, soda intake, um, making sure you know how many grams are in whatever you're consuming um, is really important. And then finally, uh, regular, uh, regular exercise. So whether this is running, um, swimming, biking, whatever uh, is your interest, you know, making sure you at least get 30 minutes a day of exercise uh, is really important because that, um, you know, allows blood to pump through your body and clear out May, maybe any minor clogs you might have um, and, and also widening those walls, um, which, which, you know, contributes to the prevention of a possible stroke or, or even heart disease. So I want to encourage you guys to do that. Um, but saying that, you know, uh, speaking from, a, I guess, a community cultural um, specialist perspective, you know, I always got to remind um, whoever I'm talking to that, you know, it hasn't always been this way, at least for Native people. You know, we always hear it all the time that uh, Native people have the highest, you know, rates of diabetes and obesity. Um, but it hasn't always been that way. You know, uh, we used to be healthy and physically active people. Um, and that's partially due to our lifestyles. We used to go out and harvest and forage for native plants and animals around us and um, consumed a very low fat diet. You know, now nowadays you have McDonald's and like even supermarkets just readily available. And so it's so easy to just grab the, the delicious stuff and not really think about it. But like I said, it, it, it does catch up to us, um, all of us. And so we got to be very conscious about that and, and think about what the old days and what our parents used to do to, to live and eat healthy. Um, and so again, referring to that history. So prior to civil war, you know, like I said, type two diabetes was practically non-existent. And after the war a case, uh, of course, uh, native peoples were forced to live on reservations and eat commodity food again, contributing to that, um, to the numbers, I guess we see today with obesity and diabetes, right? It's, um, we're eating a lot of starchy foods. Um, all of us, we go out to eat um, pretty pretty often. And again, it just clogs those arteries, clogs, uh, prevents that blood flow to, to our brain and our heart. So we, we don't want that. Um, so however, we can still reclaim those traditional lifestyles and diets. And so you can see with these pictures here, um, we have some traditional farming. You know, if you have a little community garden, maybe get out there, grow some uh, traditional foods. Um, it's summertime. We can all go out and harvest chodum and, and um, uh, which is uh, choya buds and, and the ipai, which is the prickly pear um, and, and sawar fruit, you know, the by that. So all these have a lot of health benefits and would um, um, go a long way with, with your health.
and um, you know searching for these things out in the desert it's not always easy you know sometimes you have to walk a few miles a mile to get to whatever you need maybe a good patch um, or whatever it is so um, and um, like I always say running is medicine so this is uh, another thing we used to do back in the day um, and something my mom I guess really instilled in me to run a lot so that's actually what I'm putting in your care packages um, for the event um, because you know running is commonly recommended all the time by health professionals as an effective way to lower high blood pressure and reduce stress which uh, tend to be key factors in um, in, in stroke victims so um, again this uh, so I'll be sending you guys a, r a running belt and hopefully you can utilize it um, you know you always need your keys and your phone and maybe a, a money or a bank card when you go out long distances away from home so um, I hope you guys put this to great use and um, you know I hope you guys took something away from my presentation today and uh, just go out there and continue to stay healthy Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Stella Taran. I'm the case manager here at the Tucson Indian Center. Um, I welcome er uh, each and every one that comes through our doors here at the Tucson Indian Center. And our mission is to, uh, here at the center, is to lead, service, and strength the uh, advocates for the people of the greater Tucson area for a special emphasis on the urban native community. Purpose statement is the Indian Center delivers cultural and respectful and compassionate wellness of the social services. I work for the social services and what we help is all the Native Americans with the WEO program and the WEO program brings many jobs here to the area in Tucson Indian Center. All you have to come in and get registered and get enrolled with the Tucson Indian Center with Social Services. It's myself, Stella, Jerry, and Tiffany. If you can uh, give us a call and we will schedule an appointment with you or come to orientations on Tuesday at 10 o'clock. We also have job clubs that you can come. So because of a pandemic, it's been kind of hard. So if you call us the day before the activity, we will screen you and get you in as soon as possible. So I just want to thank each and every one for joining us here at the Tucson Indian Center. Thank you. Hi, my name is Christine Chavez. I am the Diabetes Prevention Coordinator here at the Tucson Indian Center. In front of me, you have some ingredients, a bag of sugar, some cups, and some measuring spoons. I'm going to be talking about added sugars and total sugars in an ingredient in a product. So, you know, you need to check the serving size. How much serving? This is one full serving. Sometimes you have a, a product that says uh, equals two servings. So you either have to add twice the calories, twice the sugars, twice the sodium and so forth. And, you know, um, it is recommended for a 2000 calorie diet. It also has the daily value of a, of a diet on here. So you need to um, also watch for that for sodiums and <clears throat> well this root beer contains 29 grams of sugar and included 29 added sugars so that is 58 grams of sugar in this can with that being said there's every four grams equals a teaspoon so with 58 grams of sugar is 14 teaspoons of sugar. And this is what 14 teaspoons of sugar is, which contains 57% of what's in here is sugar. So this is how much sugar is in this one little can, okay? And if you don't use up the sugar as you, you know, with exercise, um, it sits into fat and that can cause heart disease, can cause cancer. So you need to be mindful of what you eat and that's called mindful eat, eating. So you need to read labels, see what you're putting in, you know, calories in, calories out. 
So, you know, and the labels are really easy to read, very easy to read, if you know how. You know, you got to know how much fats are in there, how much sodium, you know, some, you're only allowed 15, you should only have 15 milligrams of sodium, which is also soda, uh, so, salt, I'm sorry, and per day, which is two thirds, two thirds of a teaspoon, which is hardly anything at all, okay? So, and then if it already has salt, we add more salt to it, plus we put other salt, um, you know, like ingredients inside a soup, say we put, Tomatoes, which are salty, you know, or tomato sauce, it all is. So every ingredient you put into something, it has some ingredients that are already um, too much of. So you need to watch what you, what you're using, how much you use, um, how much you put in, and how much you're putting out as far as exercise goes. Because if you don't use up all those calories, you know, you can uh, gain weight. You can. It, it'll store into fat, you know, and it, this is an event to prevent um, cancer, you know, eat healthier choices of foods like vegetables and fruits, you know, fish, proteins, to where you don't get empty calories. And that's what sodas are, empty calories. Drink water, especially um, when this, you know, summer's coming, you need to be mindful of staying hydrated. So with that, I just wanted to show you a little video here that I made in order for you to kind of, you know, put the 58 grams of sugar in what this little can of soda which is only 7.5 ounces so can you imagine if you drink a bigger bottle you know the thirst busters at circle k so this is what teaspoons to grams in a ingredient looks like okay and i'm sure you're not gonna just eat all that sugar like that but that's what we do in liquid form or even in solid form, you know, so we need to watch what um, we put in our, in our mouth. So uh, hopefully with this little visual that I made for you, you will be more mindful of what you are eating and um, eat healthier, make, make great choices. Also exercise 30 minutes a day and, you know, stay healthy and be safe and um, hope, uh, you learn from some of this, you know, and uh, we I do have some of these nutrition label facts here that I uh, can mail out to you. So, you know, reach out to the Tucson Indian Center in any which way we can help, we're here for you. And I hope you enjoyed this and please be safe, be conscious, get your regular checkups. Um, very important, you know, for cancer prevention, for diabetes prevention, um, for your blood pressure and everything else that is um, involved with your all well-being. Thank you and be safe and make great food choices. Thank you. Yo, Chanyabu. Greetings. My name is Angela Montiel. I am the Youth and Community Health Educator here at the Tucson Indian Center. Today I will spe be speaking to you on cancer and tobacco. Did you know that men who smoke are at risk for heart disease, cancer, lower respiratory disease, stroke, and diabetes? And lung cancer is the leading cause of death among Native American and Alaskan Natives. Traditional tobacco is used by many different tribes and is always regarded as being extremely powerful, sacred, and dangerous. Here you, in this slide, you will see how different tribes use it in many different ways, medicinally for ear infections, earaches, relief, or asthma, and for muscle pains. Unfortunately, many of our native people are no longer gathering traditional tobacco, instead are using commercial tobacco. Um, commercial tobacco is making lots of money, uh, manufacturing different products, uh, different flavors, different, um, but has added chemicals. Is this picture, is this traditional tobacco? The answer is no, this is not traditional tobacco. 
Native American spirit is a commercial tobacco. It is not healthier than other cigarettes. If you notice here, they are still required to put a surgeon, the Surgeon General warning that smoking causes lung cancer, heart disease, emphysema, and may um, complicate pregnancy. Commercial tobacco targets American Indians to buy their product. Here you see uh, a powwow blend. And on the next slide, um, here you'll see different other, like Geronimo, Noble. Um, they use stereotypical American images like the warrior to convince um, customers that their products are natural and healthy. However, they are not. Tobacco companies aggressively advertise their commercial tobacco products. At Circle K's, you'll see it when you're pumping gas as you're walking in and the cashiers um, behind the cashier. So they are very aggressive in marketing their products. Here you'll see also they have a tobacco club at Circle K. So what's the difference between commercial tobacco and traditional tobacco? Well, commercial tobacco has 7,000 added chemicals. Some of the chemicals on this slide you may recognize, like carbon monoxide released in car exhaust fumes, lead found in batteries, tar material for paving roads, cadmium in battery acid, arsenic in rat poison, butane in lighter fluid, acidic acid, ingredients in hair dye, formaldehyde known as embalming, um, embalming fluid, embalming dead bodies, and acetone, which is found in nail polish remover, and ammonia, a common household cleaner. cleaner. So vaping, juuling has become very popular, and there's a misconception that it's more healthier than cigarettes. However, it is not. Um, they come in different flavors, um, targeting usually targeting young people, um, like Fruit Loop flavor, strawberry, blueberry flavor, mango. Um, those are some of the um, some of the uh, jewel flavors, uh, vaping flavors that they have available. Um, well, one little jewel pod is equivalent to a whole pack of cigarettes, so it is um, not healthier option. It does have added chemicals. So e-cigarettes are not safe. They are harmful. They do contain harmful ingredients such as heavy metals, nickel, tin, and lead. They have they have um, volatile organic compounds, cancer-causing chemicals in e-cigarettes, vaping tools, um, vaping um, they can cause irreversible lung damage, and they do contain nicotine, which is highly addictive. So you can get really addicted and want more, and 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 um, you may think that you're just smoking one little jewel pod, but remember that one little jewel pod is equivalent or equals to one whole pack of cigarettes. So it is very, very harmful. And young people who use uh, vaping or e-cigarettes may be more likely to go on to use regular cigarettes. As you just saw in the last slide, nicotine can harm your brain. It can rewire your brain. Nicotine is an addictive drug. It can harm your youth brain development found in most vaping products. Nicotine can harm a happy making chemical part of the brain, the hypothalamus, which controls your mood, impulse control, attention, and learning. Um, and you can, it can, you can get hooked in 10 seconds. That's how fast vapes um, deliver nicotine to your brain. So what are the effects of smoking on our bodies? Well, here you, is an example of a smoker's lung and a healthy lung. Smoking um, increases your risk of cancers. Here are some of the type, 12 types of cancer. Um, associated with smoking. Um, there's mouth and throat cancer, um, cancer of the larynx or your voice box, esophageal, esophagus cancer, lung cancer, acute 
um, my myelic leukemia, uh, liver cancer, stomach cancer, pancreas, pancreas uh, cancer, kidney, colon and rectum, and bladder and cervix. Here's another form of commercial tobacco in the form of chewing tobacco. It can uh, cause a lot of um, damage to your mouth, oral cancers, gum, cheek cancers, uh, throat, larynx, and esophageal cancers, tooth decay um, can harm your reproductive health and cause complications. More countries are requiring graphic um, images to be placed on their commercial tobacco products. Here you see an example of Canada. Um, different countries such as India and Canada are using graphic images to warn people of the harmful effects of smoking. Um, here you see the warning um, here with the child with the oxygen uh, mask is tobacco smoke can harm your children due to secondhand or thirdhand smoke. In the second image, you'll see a warning, smoking can cause heart disease, strokes, and clogged arteries. And they have a picture of someone who has had open heart surgery. In the third picture, you see a warning, smoking causes bladder cancer, which can lead to bloody urine. And there you see a, a sample, a urine sample, a bloody urine sample. So what's the difference between traditional or sacred tobacco and commercial tobacco? Well, traditional tobacco, for many Native American communities, tobacco is a gift given by creator, which is respected and honored. It's used to give thanks to creator, to honor all creatures, to seek protection and or guidance, and convey gratitude, love, and kindness. Whereas commercial tobacco is prepared commercially um, in the form of cigarettes, chewing tobacco, vaping or snuff or other forms of tobacco that may are very harmful to our health. They increase our risk of cancer, heart disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes. American Indians and Alaskan Natives are at high risk for lung cancer. Lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer deaths among American Indians and Alaskan Natives and we have the highest rates of lung cancer than any other um, group. Um, smoking cigarettes is the number one cause of lung cancer, so quitting smoking is the best way to prevent lung cancer. Thank you for listening to my presentation today on cancer and tobacco. If you would like more information on how to quit smoking, please call me at the Tucson Indian Center. Also, we have a online registration for if you would like to sign up for our next session of Freedom from Smoking through the American Lung Association. This session starts on July 28th. So uh, please give me a call if you, have, if you need any more information. Thank you. Hello everyone and welcome back to Tucson Indian Center's Health Services Department. My name is Dylan Baisa. And I'm Alan Jose. And today we are going to talk about the truth about COVID-19 vaccines. I know it may sound like kind of a scary or spooky title that we're going to shed the light on the secret truth about COVID-19 <laughs> vaccines. Yep. But really, we just wanted to uh, bring together a list of some common uh, beliefs or perceptions that people had about the COVID-19 vaccine and try to separate the truth from the myth. Yep. All right, so Dylan, the vaccine was developed quickly. Is it safe? That's a very good question, Alan. Uh, the vaccine was developed really quickly. Is it safe is a great question. Uh, the short answer is that yes, the vaccine is safe to take. There's a number of factors that uh, go into why it was able to be developed quickly and also safely. And those reasons are that there was already some existing research on the uh, COVID family of viruses. You remem may remember MERS and SARS from a number of years ago. They also belong to the COVID family of viruses. Another factor is that billions of dollars were dedicated to the COVID-19 vaccine both research and production. So it was really kind of a global effort to try and get money and funds together to try and make sure that we have an effective vaccine for our populations. 
and that while, while the vaccine was developed quickly, uh, no vaccine clinical trials were skipped and research continues to be a worldwide collaboration. That's good to know. All right, Dylan. Well, I also heard that the COVID-19 vaccine will give you COVID-19. Now, is that true? Oh, no, Alan, that's not true at all. Uh, the COVID-19 <laughs> vaccine cannot give you COVID-19, the, the virus. And this is mainly due because uh, the vaccine contains no live part of the virus, which is important if a virus wanted to infect you, that it would be alive. What it does instead uh, contain is instructions on how to fight off a COVID-19 infection. And it does this in the form of a blueprint and a wanted poster, basically, for your body, uh, which allows your body to know what it's looking for, should it come into contact with COVID, and also um, how to best fight it off when it does come in contact with it. All right. Well, someone who was, um, well, say you got the vaccine and they end up getting uh, infected after, how is that possible? That's a really good question, Alan. Uh, part, of the, part of that has to do with there's an onset uh, for COVID-19 once you've actually been infected. It does take two to five days on average, typically, to actually show any kind of symptoms uh, for COVID-19. So it's possible that somebody could have been infected with COVID-19, gone and received their vaccination, and then just started showing symptoms right around that same time. And we must also remember that it does take a few weeks to build immunity uh, to COVID-19 once you've actually received your vaccination. Okay, so if I were to get vaccinated, it would take about maybe one or two, two to three weeks uh, to be fully vaccinated? Yes, uh, when I received my second dose of Moderna, the vaccination center said that after two weeks, I would reach my uh, full immunity and would be considered fully vaccinated. Now, I believe at our vaccination event um, with the Johnson & Johnson, I believe the, um, they told us that after one month, you would be considered uh, fully immunized. And with Johnson & Johnson, that's the one dose, correct? Absolutely. That's just the one dose. And then after a month, you would be considered fully immunized. Okay. So, Alan, another common question I hear is, should people that have had COVID-19 positive infection still go ahead and get the vaccine? Oh, absolutely, yes. And uh, well, first of all, it is a myth that if you already had COVID-19 and recovered, you don't need the vaccine. So that's totally false. So people who have recovered from COVID-19 should still get a vaccine because it gives you the strongest protection from the virus. Hey, Alan, I had another question. What is it? I have a couple of pre-existing conditions. Uh, is it still okay for me to go ahead and get the COVID-19 vaccine? Yes. People with health problems like diabetes, heart disease, or have an autoimmune disorder, you know, they're more likely to get very sick if they were to contract COVID-19. So this makes getting the vaccination that much more important. So if you were to have any more specific questions or about your health or about the vaccine, then you should ask your healthcare provider. The next question that people usually ask or want to know is, are there side effects of receiving the COVID-19 vaccine? And the straightforward answer is that yes, yes, there are side effects to receiving the COVID-19 vaccine. While some people report feeling tired, under the weather, fever, or soreness after getting the COVID-19 vaccine, this is just evidence that your body is building the tools needed to fight off the virus. Symptoms generally resolve quickly, though some have stronger side effects after the second dose. The COVID-19 vaccine is your best shot against the COVID-19. Hashtag vaccines work. All right. Now that we know about the short-term side effects of the COVID-19 vaccine, what about the long-term side effects of the COVID-19 vaccine? I'm glad you asked, Alan. Actually, as of right now, um, there are actually no known uh, long-term side effects. While some participants in the clinical trials experience minor short-term side effects like headaches and fever, and some of the symptoms we mentioned previously, no serious safety concerns were found. Uh, no vaccine clinical trials were skipped, 
and safety monitoring continues even while the vaccine in, is in use. So a good example of the safety monitoring is a recent pause of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine over concerns of blood clotting in about six individuals. And after further review of the cases and the data, they have actually decided to go ahead and resume administration of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. We hope you found our presentation helpful today at kind of uh, separating the truths from the falsehoods when it comes to COVID-19 vaccines. Yes, and uh, we hope this information is uh, helping you in deciding whether or not to get the vaccination if you haven't already gotten the vaccination. So we are the Health Services Department here at Tucson Indian Center. Uh, we provide COVID-19 support. Yep, like information, vaccination information, testing information. Uh, personal protective equipment, PPE, uh, we are here to help you. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of great care packages we send out to those enrolled with health services every month. Um, if you want to, you can go ahead and reach out to us. Our number here is 520-884-7131. Alan and I both here are COVID-19 community health representatives. Yep, so you want to speak to me, my extension is 2242. And if you want to reach me, you can reach me at my extension 2243. All right, well, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Mask up. I'm Samantha Turner, and I'm the Native Connections Project Coordinator. Today, I want to tell you, and you probably already know it, that Tucson is beautiful, and we live in a very special place called the Sonoran Desert. Here in Tucson, we are surrounded by four mountain ranges the Tucson Mountains to the west, the Santa Catalina Mountains to the north, the Rincon Mountains to the east, and the Santa Rita Mountains to the south. We are among lots of trees, plants, flowers, cacti, animals, and birds. Getting outdoors is so important for your mental health, and it means to take a walk, to take a hike, to take a run, to ride your bike, play at a local park or playground, to smell the fresh air and to feel the sun on your skin. Getting outdoors and being active can really help your mind, body, and spirit. And some ways that you can, that getting outdoors helps you include de decreasing anxiety and depression when you're feeling sad or overwhelmed. It improves your overall mood. It in reduces feelings of stress or anger. It gives you a, a time out from your screen, from, from your TV, and to feel more relaxed. It improves your physical health. It improves your confidence, self-esteem, so, uh, pro, problem-solving skills, and to be a better student. And it helps you to be more active. It gives you the opportunity to make new connections and it provides you the opportunity to make more friends. I've included a website on this slide and it's called alltrails.com and it's a place where you can go to, to explore more trails in Tucson. Some places to get outdoors include the Loop Path, Tumamak Hill, Mount Lemon, Reed Park, your local or favorite playground, Saguaro National Park, and Tucson Mountain Park. Getting outdoors, moving your body and your mind is can be really, really helpful. Smell the fresh air and feel the sun. Well, I hope you enjoyed this event. You know, a lot of men have a problem going to the doctors, you know, and it's very important that you get yourself checked. You know, a lot of times we don't keep ourselves, you know, we start taking care of other people instead of ourselves. So it's very important to have insurance. If not, you know, call us here at the Tucson Indian Center. We can give you some resources, help you out. You know, call the case manager, Christina Luna is here to help you. You just call at 520-884-7131. And um, yeah, check yourselves, you know, once a month, once, you know, once a year actually. But if you have diabetes, 
Um, you know, you need to get checked every three months, you know, and that's very important for you to go to the doctors because you do get blood work and they can tell if your prostate is too high or too low and a lot of things can be prevented if you go to the doctors and get some blood work done and get checked. So with that, you know, try to uh, prevent um, any kind of uh, disease, which is either diabetes, high blood pressure, cancer, you know, keep yourselves um, safe and get yourselves checked out annually at the doctors and uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you.